Hey guys, Nash is back and I am going to do something that I've seen online and um, it's basically kind of like, you know how they have the um, text challenges on Facebook where it's like, oh, I am a let predictive speech finish your excellent sentence. Well, it's basically kind of like that and I wanted to try it out because um, if nobody knows, uh, I am a professional writer. Very professional. So I figured it would be interesting for me to try and do, boy, um, do this predictive writing text simulator to see. Um, they have a bunch of different musical artists you can choose from, but uh, seeing as I don't write songs, because that's probably a bad idea to try to do. <laughs> um, what was I? Let's let's do some good old Tennyson. Let's let's, let's start off with some poetry. I'm a, I'm a big fan of of poetry. I have my I don't have my book on me. My complete compilation of Romantic era poetry. But anyway, um, Tennyson is one of my favorite poets. So in memoriam, in particular, it's a very long poem, but it's a really good poem. So basically, the point of this is to you can publish it. What is that? <laughs> I don't know if I recommend publishing this. Okay. So, my beautiful poem, um, the, the deep moans, <laughs> the deep moans, the deep moans rain all night, curiously, curiously never, never spoken. How do I do a full stop? I, I need a, something to start it off with. The, the king, the king is sick, his Isolation grows in the vaults. <laughs> Any man bold, I was hoping to say bold enough, but any man bold is still looking wistfully in his honor and much honor he saw, he saw from thy, from thy fealty. Why is my, oh crap, I have Grammarly up. <laughs> it's like, that's not how you spell honor. We're in America. Um, dead in icy caves whispers to the moon. <laughs> And strangely spoke that which kept God, which kept God in the, in the, in the field, <laughs> the field of death. Okay, so what the hell do I have so far? Can we, wait, full stop. This is, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, it sounds like it will make sense. It's like one of those poems where you'd like read the poem in fourth grade and your teacher would be like, yes, talking about keeping God in the field of death, the poet meant that we as humanity keep God locked away in the icy fields of our souls. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it reminds me of. Late, late life. I know that's not a correct grammatical sentence, Grammarly. And death laid, laid his tender grace in the, in the reeds and drew from lust, mystic, 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 me, <laughs> mystic me for always roaming, for always roaming hills hoarding at which that which might have suffered greatly in in her pure cold plume <laughs> withdrew that which hope which hope and which hope and sky laid east the winter sea and brandished within lies lies of noble rage so i'm gonna skip ahead and add a bunch of stuff and then i'm going to do a dramatic reading of this beautiful poem that i'm putting together
Okay, so this is the beautiful Tennyson-esque poem I have composed with predictive writer. The deep moans rain all night, curiously never spoken. The king is sick, his isolation grows in the vaults. Any man bold is still looking wistfully in his honor, and much honor he saw from thy fealty. Dead in the icy caves whispers to the moon, and strangely spoke that which kept God in the field of death. Late life and death laid his tender grace in the reeds, and drew from lust mystic me. For always roaming hills, hoarding that which might have suffered, greatly in her pure, cold plume, withdrew that which hope and sky laid east the winter sea, and brandished within lies of noble rage. Better that we knew others that arise with gods, and took Excalibur to fulfill that which kept the king muttering. My purpose in blood, fruitless palms, reign with dark thought that glad weeds use for thou. Better to learn and answer within the world, yet fall plighted from the brink of battle. You know what? That makes absolutely no sense, but I think Tennyson would be proud. This is fascinating. Can I publish this? The Curious King. <laughs> We got more poetry. Go back. Oh, we got Shelley. <gasps> Keats. Wait, this should be interesting. I feel like all of my poems are gonna be about death and destruction. As you do. Okay, not so sore that Keats would be proud of this one. <laughs> Thy brow wretched light, palely loitering in the underwood. The night doth meet thy voice, she said, by the spring green hill, faded tender in her elven pride. Phantoms whose hand her soft sea embraced, never whispered close weeping, nor alter upon the midnight, save darkling fallen in her hair. Oozings of sorrow knew ye phantoms, but let fade the moon of fair dreams profit. That I knew once makes surrender, and now tis buried deep within peaceful citadel. My soul shall never cease upon her wild ecstasy embraced with patient mouth. Change and wave fade softly from cruel and rosy waking, to hear dreams thy bliss heart aches. Human passion with patient look, born with nothingness, and all ye phantoms still unravished me to sleep before the moon is nearest. You see, I think that the author of this poem had some deep, deep-seated insecurities. <laughs> That's a publish right there. Ye Phantoms. Well, we got TV. Ooh, romance. Ice. Oh, historical romance, though. I want to try doing historical romance before we get into some erotic things. Okay, so we're going for some, you know, John Hancock, John Hancock-esque romance here. Okay, so my historical romance novel takes place apparently between two brothers who are embroiled in an incestuous relationship during the Civil War. <laughs> oh my god. His brother was young and pretty. John had always wanted to make him question his honor. His bed, that was once a love story of passionate longings, is more than the man he wants. 
brother and rival, but despite the past, he wants to make him entirely hopeful for their love. Romances embroiling intrigued his brother, and when he came on his brother, he sees love. Cruel is the crumbling America with no hope and renewal. Never had Cole imagined for their future secret love. Desire takes unexpected consequences, but his brother was young and his heart newly widowed. The past may threaten to consume his brother, the woman scorned by bloodshed and war. His beloved boy can change and love with his brother when he discovers that he wants love and adventure. A young man ought to find a man before the family has changed. He wants seduction filled with powerful hunger and love between forbidden passions that he wants to know. I love how even Grammarly is like, this is a love story worth publishing. You know what? That's a published. Brothers Forbidden. For Brothers Forbidden. Where am I submitting these to? I want to know. Okay, so we're going back to romance. We're going to try some erotica since this is where this is going anyway. I've been recording for 44 minutes. Oh my god, fuck. Okay, keyboard needs to process. Oh boy. Okay, so I think that this could could rival Fifty Shades of Grey. She needs greater love to make her body work. She finds him and discovers that dominating filthy sex is more than meets the eye. With him in her bed, all his pleasure in her wranglers... <laughs> With him in her bed, all his pleasure in her wranglers is everything she never expected. Julia and Nate, addictively sex, and their passionate obsession takes root deep inside her. She wants secretly his sexual intensity, and she meets his pleasure without sacrifices. Love and ecstasy need sex, but there, looking into womanhood, she knows that she desperately, deliciously, is consumed by monsters. Abusive upbringing and a few other naughty things are best-selling author's Christmas wishes. Unbridled pleasure is everything, and porn wars lead to just burning questions about Dallas. Much of her past is inescapable. He knows that. And is willing... <laughs> Much of her past is inescapable. He knows that. And is willing to provide pleasure to her cat and her. That is not tolerated in Hastings. The world is not used to loving, filthy fantasy power. <laughs> Grammarly is like, what is your fucking That is fucking horrible, and I'm gonna fucking submit that one. <laughs> filthy fa- I can't- <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this this site is fantastic. I mean, I've been recording for 57 minutes now, but I mean, there's just, I mean, it takes you a bit to find the certain words and try to put them together, and I have a way of overthinking the fucking sentence structures, because I'm trying to write something that makes sense, but it just doesn't quite make sense, so that's just my problem. But, um, yeah, I will leave a link to the descript link in the description um, where you can go find this for yourself if you want to write some really bad erotica. <laughs> and, you know, uh, if you write some really bad erotica, you just drop it in the comments, and why not? Let's just all read really bad erotica together. So, yeah, I mean, and if you like this video, smack that fucking like button and tell me that I should write more poor poetry or really bad erotica, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, so... Until next time, this has been Really Bad Erotica with Nash. <laughs>